Heroin. It was once used by doctors, laudanum, cough syrups. The Germans synthesized a chemical cousin in the lab in 1916. It was called oxycodone. Oxycodone is a near identical twin of heroin. Chemists find a way to produce the poppy plant's pain-relieving secrets in the lab. Just over 20 years later, in 1939, oxycodone is introduced in the United States. Oxycodone is eventually used in Percodan in the 1950s, Percocets in the 1970s, and Oxida in the new millennia. Pharmaceutical companies across the world produce drugs containing oxycodone. None may be more famous than Purdue Pharma, a private company that grew a family's wealth to one of the richest in the world a company that would be fined hundreds of millions for misrepresenting OxyContin, a company whose blockbuster drug would become part of nearly every conversation of the U.S.'s opioid epidemic. These are the Sackler brothers, Mortimer, Arthur, and Raymond. In 1952, Mortimer and Raymond founded Purdue from the ruins of a struggling company. Arthur, an advertising executive, would earn a place in the Medical Marketing Hall of Fame as the father of modern pharmaceutical advertising. Today, Mortimer and Raymond's families are among the wealthiest in America, worth an estimated $13 billion. How did the Sacklers realize the American dream? It all starts in the 1950s. Back then, drug company Hoffman LaRoche began making Valium. Purdue didn't make Valium, but Arthur penned the playbook that turned Hoffman LaRoche's Valium into a $100 million drug using clever marketing and advertising. Purdue Pharma wanted its own moneymaker, and the opportunity came over 40 years later as concern grew in the 80s and 90s that pain was being undertreated. In 1995, Purdue went back to Arthur's playbook and seized an opportunity in the pain treatment market. It took an old drug, oxycodone, repackaged it with new marketing, and pressed it into a pill. Purdue added a time-release agent and branded it OxyContin. In 1995, OxyContin was approved by the FDA. It was the most powerful oxycodone pill ever approved. For people susceptible to addiction, what the FDA approved was the equivalent of bottled synthetic heroin. Even the label was a roadmap for getting high. This is what it said. OxyContin tablets are to be swallowed whole and are not to be broken, chewed, or crushed. Swallowing broken, chewed, or crushed OxyContin tablets could lead to the rapid release and absorption of a potentially toxic dose of oxycodone. Purdue Pharma took OxyContin to market as the new 12-hour pain relief. It was the time-release formula that would help chronic pain sufferers get back to their lives. Purdue touted low rates of addiction and abuse. In 1995, the American Pain Society advocated that pain be treated as a fifth vital sign in patient care. Pain was deemed as important as breathing, pulse, blood pressure, and temperature. Purdue would provide substantial funding for the American Pain Society. Millions of prescriptions would be filled and billions will be made for the family. Propelled by the skyrocketing sales of OxyContin, doctors and healthcare practitioners purchased more than 45 million doses of oxycodone in the first half of 2010. Three states represented over 90% of the market. 739,000 doses in Georgia, 927,000 in Ohio, and a whopping 40,800,000 in Florida. Purdue salespeople fanned out to doctors' offices in communities in the northeastern U.S. and across Appalachia. The loggers and miners in these parts of the country had legitimate pain from their dangerous and often grueling jobs. As OxyContin began to flow to the pain sufferers, the cash flowed back to Purdue. OxyContin had been on the market for only months when the American Pain Society teamed up with the American Academy of Pain Medicine. They wrote that doctors should aggressively treat pain and not be afraid to use opioids. Then in 2001, the Joint Commission, a nonprofit which accredits health facilities, told hospitals to aggressively treat pain as well. That same year, OxyContin sales rose by 50%. 6.2 million prescriptions were written. Demand for OxyContin led to a large underground black market. Florida's lax regulations and pill mills fed the market. By 2005, OxyContin was second only to cigarettes in reported first-time drug use. More people tried OxyContin than marijuana for the first time. A pill, prescribed by doctors, was more popular than a joint in the United States. Law enforcement began to take notice. The attorney for the Western District of Virginia began investigating OxyContin and Purdue Pharma. In 2007, Purdue Pharma and three executives pled guilty to illegally misbranding OxyContin. The company and executives were fined $634 million. But the judgment didn't slow OxyContin sales. They continued to rise. By 2010, 34 states were keeping records on prescriptions, including OxyContin. Florida wasn't one of those states. In 2010, millions of pills were sold by Palm Beach and Broward County pill mills. Florida passed a prescription monitoring law in 2009, seven years after it was first introduced. But the legislature didn't provide any money for it in 2009, so it had no effect. Then in 2011, one of Governor Rick Scott's first actions was to try and kill off the database law. 
Other states in Washington were outraged. He changed his mind, and so in October 2011, the database was finally collecting prescription information and making it available to law enforcement to stop doctor shopping. In the nine years it took to get the database running, 39,000 Floridians died of a prescription opioid overdose. That sobering number includes 12,800 who died after using oxycodone, the drug used to make Oxycontin. In 2011, Florida finally started to monitor prescriptions. The Florida pill pipeline was shut off. The heroin epidemic ignited.